Hi, my name is Rachel Privet, and I am joined by Hope Lewandowski, a senior midfielder for the University of Maryland's women's soccer team. What have things been looking like for you since we've been at home? So it's just been so different than my normal life as a student athlete. Usually when I come home for the summer, I am lucky to have the privileges to be able to go to a gym and work out and like lift and everything or like I usually play on a summer team um, with a bunch of other girls and so my final last like summer was just me training by myself so it was definitely looked a lot different um my motivations were just completely different because like I didn't have a set time that I had to go work out or train with anyone like it was literally just me all, my, all by myself like in my garage like doing home workouts with like the 30 pound kettlebell that I had so it definitely looked a lot lot different than um normal for me so it's kind of crazy but not not something I would typically prefer but it, it was still okay so how did you stay motivated like to keep going because like you said it's not like you had you could rely on maybe like teammates to go on or a coach maybe in your ear so I guess how did you stay motivated and maybe what did those workouts look like for you yeah so I'm not gonna lie when I first got home after this like after spring break it my motivation was like at an all-time low like I was just like I can't work out like this is really hard for me but once like summer like I officially hit and classes like were over I was like okay like I need I need to get going because for me I guess really my motivation was like this is my senior year like you have to be ready no matter what and for me typically like I'm just someone who I'm like okay I just need to get started and then once I'm working out I'm good to go like it's just getting it's literally just putting my clothes on and going outside and working out that's my thing so really my motivation that drove me was just like it's my senior year like you know you need to train no matter what the season's gonna look like and just and be ready and my workouts definitely looked a little different one of the things that I picked up this quarantine my quarantine hobby was yoga so that I really, really enjoyed doing that. Um, something I had never really gotten into before. So usually like I would warm up, do like 30 minutes of yoga. And then our strength coach actually sent us like home workouts to do. And most of it was like body weight stuff. I threw in a little, I have like a couple weights at home, not like a, a huge rack or anything. So just like little home workouts and then usually finish it with some running just in my backyard or, or down around the neighborhood. So that's what, it, it typically looked like, yeah. And going into your senior year, um, things aren't going to look the same. I mean, due to COVID and with the Big Ten Conference recently, you know, deciding to postpone uh, fall sports. What were your initial thoughts when you found out like that news? It was definitely weird because it was always in the back of my head that it was going to be a, a possibility, you know, like going through the summer. I tried not to think about it too much because it was like, why waste months worrying about it when you don't know what's going to happen what well, happened so but it was just like I knew it was like the inevitable it was just like when it was going to happen and it never really hit me until it was like fully announced so like the last couple of days kind of just have been like a shock and just I mean it's a lot of emotion with it being my senior year and and everything and for me specifically I was supposed to graduate after this fall so it kind of just all we worked my entire like plan. I thought I was going to be like applying for jobs like towards the end of the semester and everything and finishing my career. So now I kind of have to like rework all that and, and move it to the spring. But you know what, now that like kind of like the dust has been starting to settle, it's like, okay, like it's frustrating and, it, and it's hard to deal with the fact that we worked out for four months on our own to get here and have like, we actually started preseason. We had like four days with the preseason um, and the team was looking so good and we were so excited. So it's definitely very hard to deal with, but now I guess it's just, we're fortunate because we get six months of training before our, our season really truly starts. Cause usually with fall athletes, you get, two weeks of preseason and then you start playing. So it's exciting because we'll get to truly train as a, as a full team with our new incoming freshmen before we get to play. Um, but it definitely has been a, a hard couple of days just because like it doesn't hit you until it's actually real, so. What have those conversations sounded like or look like with your teammates? Um, it's definitely very hard like talking with all the seniors because like, this whole thing has been, just been a lot of like unknowns and a lot of questions not being answered. So it's been a, definitely a frustrating process. And especially for most seniors, like we're like, okay, if the spring doesn't happen, then what do we do? We're trying not to have those conversations, but like it's always in the back of our head. Um, 
but you know it just like for for me personally getting to stay another semester I'm just like grateful to be be around my teammates a little bit longer and, and have an, an extended college experience I guess so you know we've all those conversations have just been sharing like frustrations and everything but at the same time we're just like it is what it is and we got to move forward and, and make the most of what like the opportunities that we're going to get from it okay and let's backtrack a little bit so when did you get into soccer what made you decide to get into soccer Oh, wow. I think <laughs> way back. So I just like, I think I started kindergarten, like just rec soccer. My parents signed me up just because that was what all of my friends were doing. And then second grade, I think it was U8, I started club just because like one of my really close friends, her mom, like worked, for, had older brothers in the club and she gave my parents the information and she was like, you should sign. I also, I also backtrack a little bit. I also have a twin sister. So we both started at this, we both started soccer at the same time. So they're like sign hope and hand up. We think they'll really like it. And for me, I am from like a small, like country town in Ohio. And so playing club soccer was like not the norm in that town, at least like it was popular in Northeast Ohio. But like for me growing up in my high school, I was the only one who played club soccer. Like most people just played rec in high school. They didn't go beyond that. So so I signed up for club soccer. So it introduced me to like a whole new realm of people because I didn't know anyone because no one from my area played. Um, so then I, I played club soccer and I played for the same club my my entire experience, like from U8 to senior year of high school. And um, yeah, I just like, I guess I just, I fell in love with it just because that was like really the only thing I did. Like I did some other sports like here and there. I ran cross country for my first two years in high school. I played t-ball but like soccer really was my true love just because I had so many friends with it and and really enjoyed it and I was good at it so that probably helped a little bit um and then my my twin sister she stopped playing in sixth grade so from sixth grade on it was just my thing um which I I guess I really enjoyed and yeah it, it was unique for me because I didn't play high school soccer so backtrack a little bit the the town that I grew up in I had I graduated with a class of like 48 kids so like super super small and so they didn't have a girls soccer team all the girls if they wanted to play you had to play on the boys team so I decided not to do that and I ran cross country my first two years and then trained with my club coach in the fall for my junior and senior year so that was kind of like my my college or not my college my high school and and growing up experience what made you want to go to Maryland so my, my, my recruiting experience is actually like a pretty wild one. So junior year is when I committed like February of my junior year and the months before that, like I really didn't get looked at by a lot of, of big D1 schools. It's fun, kind of funny because I, I talked to all my teammates now and they're like, yeah, I was recruited this school, this school, this school. And I was like, that was not me at all. Um, I was recruited to like some mid-major division one schools, like, Buffalo and England State but not anything like the Big Ten and so I was gonna I was down to like those two schools and then December of my junior year I was at a Florida tournament at Disney World or whatever and Ray the current coach at Maryland he was like watching another team's game and he like got bored and just like turned around and started watching my team and apparently like I reminded him of like some player that some player that he he knew and um and had coached and so he reached out to my mom like right after the game and he was actually the coach at Harvard at the time so it was like oh my god like I'm getting recruited to Harvard and then two weeks after I, he started recruiting me he got the job in Maryland and he was like hey I'm going to Maryland and I I would like you to to come and so for me it was kind of crazy like growing up in Big Ten country in Ohio like playing in the Big Ten was like my dream, like playing against Ohio State and Michigan. And so, and surprisingly, I, it still took me, it wasn't like an automatic decision. Like I think the week that I decided like when, where I was committing, I like cried every single day. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do because it was like my mom wanted me to go to Buffalo because they played like all like schools closer to home and so she wanted me to be close to home my dad on the other hand is like no you need to go to Maryland like it's your dream like whatever you're gonna work you're gonna have to work way harder to play there but he's like you should go and so I ended up deciding to go to Maryland and 
that's that's kind of how I, I got here. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy, but um, definitely wouldn't trade it for the world. And I know going into my senior year, almost on my way out, like I know for a fact I made the right decision 100%. I know when you decided to go to Maryland, that was the first time you and your twin sister were separated? Yes. And I know now she's reunited with you at Maryland on the video team, but how was it, one, going through that process when, you know, maybe you were on your own for the first time? without your sister yeah it was definitely a unique experience because in in high school we truly did besides soccer and sports we truly did everything together um and I actually graduated a semester early so I I the terms like gray shirted so I graduated in the fall of, of my senior year of high school and came in the spring like semester early so we were apart for that semester and then we were also apart for the year of like our freshman year, she went to a different school. So it was definitely very unique. And I think it's kind of crazy when, cause people today see us and they're like, oh my God, you guys are so close. Like your best friends. Like when we're in a room with other people, they're like, you guys are annoying because you're so in sync and you just like <laughs> talk to each other. Like, I know we annoy people cause we're so close, but I was like, honestly, like we weren't always like that in high school. I mean, we were, we were close and we were definitely best friends, but not nearly what we are now. So I think actually being apart made us grow so much more together and like appreciate each other more. Um, I know we were like on FaceTime, like either every day or every other night when we were away. So we definitely grew so much closer during that time. And then when she came to Maryland, like it was just like amazing, like being together and and getting this experience together she's definitely I could tell you know um seeing some of the videos she's shooting you like she's like your number one fan so that that's really cool to have that you know opportunity yeah we we recently had a conversation you know because this is we were technically going into our last camp together and we're just like how blessed we are to be able to experience this like not a lot of people really truly get to have college one with their siblings or their best friend, like me and her are best friends. Um, and then to also be so involved at the same time with her in football and then me in soccer, we actually like overlap a lot. And so it's just been like an incredible experience that we definitely don't take for granted. And in her coming to our games, like and shooting, and she, she's just like so close with not like me, obviously, but like my teammates as well. And like everyone in athletics knows her too. So it's truly just been a, an incredible experience. And her stuff is amazing. So like all my teammates love her because her content is just so cool. And so, yeah, it's been a really cool experience. Let's talk about your leadership on the team. I know that following the um, George Floyd's death, you launched a campaign to educate athletes on Mar University of Maryland campus and the staff members about the voting process. So what made you want to launch that, camp that campaign? Yeah, so it was really unique how it all got started. So I actually didn't like sign up for it. Risa, um, she's the director of student athlete development at Maryland. She actually reached out to me because um, I'm the SAC and SGA student liaison. And so she reached out to me and was like, hey, like we're getting this, this initiative started at Maryland, would you be interested? And I was like, yes, like this is awesome. Like this is so cool. I, I, that's kind of how I, I got started. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's just kind of how we got started. And, and I really liked where they were going with it. And I really think that it's, it's so valuable because I think, like I've said in the past, I think when you get to college and especially being a student athlete and especially being out of state, you just get so caught up in life and you miss the deadlines or you just like, just not involved when really student athletes, um, they have a you very unique platform to use their voices. And I think, more student athletes should take advantage of it. And I, I'm really happy with the program, not only like pushing students to vote, but like actually getting them the proper education so that they know like who they're voting for, what they're voting on, and they can make like the proper decisions based on that. Okay. Um, when you decided to like lead that conversation um, about social injustice, what were the conversations like with your teammates maybe? Was it an uncomfortable um, conversation? Hmm. It wasn't necessarily uncomfortable. It was very welcoming. And I think everyone was just open to having the discussion because, you know, for most of us, this is a unique situation that a lot of us hadn't lived. And so a lot of people were just open to hearing others speak, but then also just like knowing, every, like informing everyone that like we were there for them. And so we, 
I mean, the conversation was like a while ago, so I can't exactly remember what we talked about, but it was just like, you know, we need to, as white student athletes, educate ourselves so that not only can we be there for, for our teammates, but use, honestly use like the power that we have and to, to speak for them and, and to create change for them as well. So it was definitely a very good conversation. Um, not some that we've ever had before but it, it kind of opened the door to allow us to have more of those types of conversations and then push each other to, to educate each other and le learn more so that we can like be the best versions of ourselves and create the culture that we truly want to have and then just honestly just be better people in general for those around us as you're anticipating the season possibly maybe spring sports what skills are you trying to um improve off the field or on the field? On the field. On the field. Um, I definitely think I, how do I want to say this? As like a senior, I feel like I have the technical and tactical parts of my game down. You know, it's more of now the leadership style that I, I really want to adopt and take on and help my teammates as much as possible. Um, and just really grow into that role of myself because, you know, like, I feel like, you know, my game's not going to change at this point. Like, I only have a few more months left. Like, it's more of, like, the type of person I want to be on the field and then also off the field just to, to lead my team in the best way possible that I can. And just, like, recognizing, you know, that each person kind of takes an individual – they need different type of leaders. Like, I can't be the same leader for 20 other girls on my team. Like, each person needs someone new. So it's, like, just realizing – like what my teammates need and, and what they're going to best respond to and, and help them out as much as possible. Cause well, one thing that I've realized is that, you know, you could be the best player on the field, but in, in 20 years, this, no one's going to remember the stats. They're going to remember who you were and, and how you handled things and how you treated people most importantly. So that's just really what I want to do is, is build my teammates on the field, but also off the field, whether that by leading and showing them by example or assisting and amplifying them in, in any type of way. So, so that's really what I'm trying to I'm build. I, I tried to say that I, I tried to do that in the spring. It got a little cut short. <laughs> like I didn't really, cause we didn't really play that much. But, you know, that's just kind of something that, again, I tried to carry into camp, kind of got cut. I got four days of it. So I tested it out a little bit, but definitely taking time off the field and realizing what I need to do best for my teammates on the field. And hopefully I'll be able to apply that through fall training and then eventually in games in the spring. But that's really what I'm just trying to focus on is like my leadership style and, and what my teammates need out of me um, just to help them and, and the team in the best way possible. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much.